all this is dr mubeen sayed from drbeen.com welcome to one more show so i wanted to discuss a number of uh, topics for long covid and i thought that instead of one big video why not i chunk them up so this is the first part there is a study about anti nuclear antibodies and i want to talk about that study and why in long covid or vaccine injury we should get our ana levels so let's start a discussion So starting with, this is drbean.com. This link is present in the description if you would like to get access to all of drbean.com video lectures and the price is really low. <laughs> Check out this. This is a one-time price. It's not a recurring price. It's not monthly price. It's just one time. And it gives you access to everything except CMEs. You don't get to earn CMEs, but you can watch all the content. Okay, so with this, I'm going to share this as a background this is a uh, oxford university rheumatology book it is an older book but the content is still very um, uh, pertinent so i wanted to make sure that we can look at it uh, the links are in the description then i'm going to share this study as well this study is recently done by canada and they talk about long covid especially fatigue and cough and muscle muscle aches that are associated with anti nuclear antibodies so i'll discuss that finally i have discussed these topics in detail on long story short with dr bean from the flccc platform so here if you see anti nuclear antibodies as predictors of long covid this is a 28 minutes talk and then anti nuclear antibodies what are these is another talk over here so i'm, I'm not going to uh, cover this in this detail i'm going to try to do it very fast i also have this link which is about the from the quest lab about the ana screening and what does it mean then some little topic about sle as well so let's start a discussion so starting from this this little diagram that you're seeing is let me get my pen this diagram that you're seeing is actually the diagram of a histone histones are imagine in our nucleus we have very long thread of dna imagine you have a long yarn and you want to organize it so what do we do we humans you know spin the yarn around a ball like structure similarly our nucleus and cells do the same thing what they have is they have these histones that are little ball like structures and around them we spin the dna so that it is staying it stays organized then what happens is when we need to have a gene expression let's say we want to make insulin then that particular gene is loosened up at the histones a copy is made then it is tightened back up on the histones so this is the organizing structure why am i talking about it because anti nuclear antibodies could be targeting the histones and remember this is all inside the nucleus so they could be targeting histones which will then mean whenever an antibody will be attached to any part of the dna or or the nuclear material or genetic material that cell is in trouble because that cell would develop inflammation if not inflammation at least there is going to be a mechanical disruption because imagine your ball of yarn now has a knife stuck in it and so it won't be able to function correctly so that's one then imagine here is a nucleus in a cell and within the nucleus there are lots of histones histones have lots of dna attached to them so that's just a general picture of how our uh, what we say is chromatin chromatin is our genetic material how that is organized now imagine that we have a cell that has broken down why is it broken down imagine this was some inflammatory state this was some infection it it, it may be covid it may be a respiratory syncytial virus it may be streptococcus staphylococcus it may be other reasons for inflammation whatever it is our cell has broken down 
this is a really dangerous situation why because the the normal behavior of our body is that as soon as a cell is broken down we like to clear out the cell's broken pieces and cell itself imagine in our own home if a glass breaks down if it breaks down we don't leave it there it is going to hurt us so what we do is we pick up all those little pieces and we throw them away same is what we need to do with the cells however if the cell stays out there for longer period of time or if there are too many broken cells imagine what would happen all those open broken cells with their guts open to the environment will become an invitation for the immune system to come and look at them and say what the heck is this and immune system cells can go mad and they can start trying to attack the exposed parts now this needs a clarification as much as our immune system is able to recognize our self and tolerate us still the pieces of our cells that are closed inside the cell our immune system cells have less exposure to those pieces so if these pieces inadvertently become exposed to our immune system our immune system goes mad and says what the heck am i looking at i've never seen this thing before i don't think it is self and they would start attacking our immune system does recognize us to an extent but just keep this in mind as well what is the takeaway here the takeaway is it is possible for a cell to be damaged and open and that would cause the guts of the cell including the nuclear parts of the cell or the genetic material or nucleotides to become exposed to the immune system and the immune system will start making antibodies against them for example if you see in this diagram histones are exposed dna is exposed then r r n p so ribo ribonucleoprotein this is a protein in the cytoplasm not in the nucleus similarly here there is another ribonucleoprotein that is um, um, exposed i believe this one is trans acyl uh, amino transferase or trna transferase trna synthase so this is another protein that is open then it is also possible now look at this this is a broken cell in the cell the cells organelle the pieces of the cell ribosomes of the cell golgi operators of the cell the uh, smooth endoplasmic reticulum rough endoplasmic reticulum perisomes vesicles they're all broken and they're all coming out and they're all littered around the cell the dna is spilling from the cell this all is a genetic material exposed to the immune system and if immune system starts attacking them we will have a problem and if it attacks the nuclear system then we'll have anti nuclear antibodies so one more thing that sometimes is overlooked and this is very important that is imagine we have a cell imagine we were vaccine injured or we had long covid and because of that we have inflammation because of inflammation our cells are breaking down when our cells are broken down imagine like an egg the cell opens up the reactive oxygen species that are present in the area of inflammation mostly inside the cells when the cell breaks open these reactive oxygen species do not stop working then imagine there is a cell it was a healthy cell because of vaccine injury or because of covid or some other problem cell became damaged the part of damage is that it will develop reactive oxygen species in it and then those reactive oxygen species would cause cell damage eventually the cell would open up when the cell opens up the reactive oxygen species would still continue to attack it they would not just go and sit down on a side that all right we have broken the cell our job here is done we are we are good no they would still continue to attack it this is a very delicate point do you know why when a healthy cell 
and its parts are exposed to our immune system, the chances for our immune system to ignore them are more. It is possible that immune system will look inside the cell and even then recognize it as self and say, you know what, this is just part of our own cells, no worries. But if there is a drug, you know, there is a drug induced autoimmune diseases, if there is a drug or there is reactive oxygen species that are present and that continue to deshape, deform the proteins, then when an immune system cell would come and look at it, it would see those deformed proteins because the vultures, the active oxygen species, are still attacking these proteins and deshaping them, denaturing them. And our immune system can become confused and say, maybe these are foreign proteins, this is not self, and they would start attacking. Now for the anti-nuclear antibodies, please remember, it's not necessary that these are all the antibodies present, antigens that are present, the nuclear part, are present inside the nucleus. The antibodies can be directed against the parts that are inside the nucleus, that are inside the cytoplasm, even on the surface of the cell. For example, in the case of Sjogren's syndrome, the Rho and La antigens are actually exposed on the cell's surface. Against those are the antibodies produced. So what is the relationship to the vaccine and the inflammation? COVID. What happens is in the long COVID of the vaccines, there is a continuous inflammation and there is a sustained damage to the cells. And when they keep opening up the cells, we try to clear them out very fast. How do we clear them? We use uh, macrophages. But imagine macrophages cannot catch up that fast. There is so much damage that is occurring. So that allows a cell to sit out there for a longer time, which is broken cell, and an immune system can become activated. And even when the ROS are present and they're also causing the damage, now immune system can become activated and go against the nuclear system as well, in addition to other parts. Then there is another very important thing, and that is, look at this little... Um, a protein that is carting things. So this protein is a serum amyloid protein, which, so there are many serum amyloid proteins. This little protein is called serum or sap protein because it is found in the amyloids. But the function of this little serum protein, that means it is in circulation, its role, think about it, it's very interesting. When our cells break down, the cell's chromatin, the histones, the DNA, the messenger RNA, the pieces of DNA, they need to be cleared out. And normally these cannot be cleared out because these are charged particles and they cannot really travel around in the body easily. So what happens is this little sap protein come and bind with the, with the genetic material and helps it become solubilizable in the circulation and enter the circulation and take it away. In some people, this protein itself is damaged, genetically damaged. And the result is that these folks cannot clear their nuclear material after a cell is damaged. And now imagine the cell is damaged, the remaining parts of the cell have been eaten away by macrophages, but the nuclear pieces are just sitting out there like little intestine present on some, some floor. And the immune system cells will come, they will look at that DNA and histones, start attacking it, and all of a sudden ANA would appear. Why is this an important discussion? The, this discussion is important because it is possible if let me show you this study very quickly i thought this will be a 10 minutes worth of a talk and it's already 14. look at this study here in this study they say circulating anti-nuclear and autoantibodies in covid19 survivors predict long covid symptoms so they have seen that in some people who are so covid19 survivors they have ana antibodies and the presence of ana in them is an indicator and has strong association with fatigue. So these would be here. Fatigue, dyspnea, and cough severity. And the good news here in this study was that the ANA would automatically continue to become better. So after a year, the 
titers or levels of ANA had become half in these patients. But this tells us that it is entirely possible that when somebody has sustained production of damaged tissue, that means they have sustained inflammation, then it is possible they would end up developing uh, anti-nuclear antibodies and an autoimmune disease that can continue for a long time. This is why my request to providers, I have always maintained this, I would say it again. My request to providers is to make sure that if your patient is in a chronic inflammatory state, then you keep their inflammation in control because inflammation can give rise to ANA production by giving broken cells. And then ANA production would create an autoimmune disease that will cause inflammation and the patient would get stuck in a in a vicious cycle. There are lots of debates that did ANA come first or the inflammation come first. So whatever comes first, you have to break this cycle. And let me show you, just in the context of SLE, let me show you how some of this is managed. So if I go to this one and go quickly to the SLE. So look at this SLE. How is SLE treated? Treating SLE often requires a team approach because of the number of organs that can be affected. SLE treatment consists primarily of immunosuppressive drugs that inhibit activity of the immune system, hydroxychloroquine, corticosteroids, and often used for, for, to treat SLE. Then FDA has other antibodies um, approved as well. The point is, especially once again for the providers, please make sure that if your patient has long COVID, especially they have dyspnea, fatigue, cough, chronic cough, check them up for ANA. I know that ANA from 15 to 30 percent of the patients can have ANA without any pathologies, but if there is consistent ANA plus, according to this study, if they also have, in addition to the ANA, if they have tumor necrosis factor alpha, D-dimer, and interleukin 1 beta increase as well, then that is for sure associated with COVID. I would also add maybe with vaccine too. And please then manage them accordingly. This is the discussion. First talk for today. I will do one more talk today about the, the reason autoantibodies against ACE2 must be checked and why should they be checked? I'm, I'm going to discuss that because a patient of mine, not mine, meaning a patient who is in contact with me, said her doctor refused to do anti-ACE2 because the doctor said, what will I do with that knowledge? And I think that is because they do not know what to do with that knowledge. So I would discuss that in another discussion, maybe in half an hour. So thank you very much. There are links in the description if you would like to support this work or you can buy Dr. Bean Access as well, and that helps too. Thank you, and I would see you in another half an hour. Bye-bye for now.